Relax, relax, breathe. Long away, relax, relax, breathe. And long we are breathing. Let's let's go over these uh, announcements. Then we're gonna move around uh, in the room. Um, a reminder uh, that on uh, Tuesday we have Bible study, uh, and then at, that's at two. And then we also have a healing service at Trinity Bergen at six thirty p.m. So we'll be uh, doing that at that time. And um, I understand it will be warmer outside. On Tuesday, praise the Lord. Yeah. No, be nine degrees. Yes. And and nine is still above zero. So. Forty-nine degrees warmer than now. Praise the Lord. Yeah. So we're gonna do it then. Um, then Wednesday, uh, quilting is at nine, and then we're gonna have worship uh, here on Ash Wednesday, and that is at seven p.m. And there will be soup and sandwich served at 6.15 p.m. So we'll be doing that as well. And then uh, Thursday, I have a Bible study down in Devil's Lake. And then Friday, we have an intercessory prayer at 9.30 a.m. And then uh, the following Sunday, everything is as we normally have it. Um, and there, we will have confirmation at 3.30 p.m. We're having it today as well, except that it's going to be on Zoom, so we're going to have it on Zoom uh, today after the uh, after the meeting. All right. Also, I uh, want to let you know uh, one that the children of Dorothy Johnson would like to uh, take this moment uh, uh, to uh, join them in celebrating their her 95th birthday on Wednesday. Uh, while she cannot be visiting right now, cards and phone calls would be welcome. Yeah, and they give her a number and her address there. Uh, and you know, I, I thought about that. You know, I, I was, I was uh, talking a little bit this morning about the fact that yesterday, not yesterday, last Sunday, I was told about somebody who was failing over at the nursing home in Devil's Lake, one of them at Heartland. And um, it's so hard to get in and see these people. And uh, in fact, I was standing at the door and um, so, well, you know, I'm here to see her, I'm her pastor, you know, she's passing away. And they're like, well, we have to call the management, make sure that's okay. And I had to wait outside the door for a while until they figured out that it was okay for me <laughs> to come pray with somebody who was on the way home. So, anyway, I, I, I understand that they want to keep people safe. On the other hand, I think that, that this just emphasizes the point that, that um, you know, these people are in a bad way when they're in the nursing home. They're not, you know, you can't even see your own family. So let's, uh, you know, let's remember Dorothy and then let's, uh, but if we do know the phone number of some of these people, let's give them a call and, and see how they're doing. Um, all right. Oh, the other thing is that we have been taking, uh, uh, financial donations from the, uh, Fenner a benefit fund, and, um, and that's been going uh, really well. Uh, we've had we've actually collected uh, about so far about three thousand dollars, and then there's another thing they did over by their area. They collected over seven thousand. So you know it's coming in really good. Uh, that jar is still upstairs. So if you want to get to that, you can. Uh, this is going to be an ongoing thing, you know, as far as recovery and all the other things you got to do until the kidney comes along. But in any case, um, he is going to have his surgery on Ash Wednesday, so we'll keep him uh, in prayer for that. All right, anything else before we start? Mm -hmm. Well, does he have a kidney available for him? Nope. They're going to take the two kidneys out uh, right now and put them on dialysis oh. and detoxify his body. And in the meantime, they're looking for 
And can you see there, there are two options. Either they find a living donor, which would be the ideal, or they use a cadaver uh, activity, which will work. But, you know, the, the lifespan on that is not as good. And the other thing is that, uh, you know, whether he has a living donor or not, you know, you're going to have to, he'll be taking anti-rejection meditation for a long, long, long time, well, his entire life. Well, either way, he would do that. Yeah, he would do that either way. But I, I'm thinking that with a cadaver, and one that's not really typed up to him as well, that the idea of the, 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 the rejection would be a little more likely. So, yeah, so, you know, pray for that living. Actually, what I'm praying for is to create a miracle. Yep. That's what I'm praying for. Yep. A created miracle. So, but we'll keep him in prayer today as well. All right. Anything else? We'll sit. We like to sit. <laughs> well, sit. You do it. You just sit. And we're going to say this. Chair is warm. We're going to say this. Blessed be your name. All right. And number twenty-seven. 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 There it is. All right. Twenty-seven. Let's wrap in twenty-seven. Okay. Amen. Along with a lot of other numbers. <laughs> Blessed be your name in the land that is plentiful, where the streams of abundance flow. Blessed be your name. Blessed be your name, where I found in the desert place, though I walk through the wilderness, blessed be your name. Every blessing you pour out, turn back to praise. When the darkness closes in, Lord, still I will say, blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be your name, blessed be the name of the Lord, blessed be your glorious name. Blessed be your name when the sun shining down on me, when the world's all as it should be, blessed be your name. Blessed be your name on the road hard with suffering, for the pain in the offering, blessed be your name. Every blessing you pour out, I'll turn back to praise. When the darkness closes in, Lord, still I will say, blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be your name. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be your glorious name. You give and take away. You give and take away. Our heart will choose to say, Lord, blessed be your name. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be your name. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be your glorious name. Amen. All right, we'll continue with the service found in your home. And we'll continue our service this morning in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Almighty God, whom all hearts are open, all desires know, and from whom no secrets are hid, let the thoughts of my heart to find the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you, and worthily magnify your holy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. According to the Word of God in 1 John chapter 1, verses 8 through 9, if we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. 
But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us therefore confess our sin before God and before one another. <clears throat> Most merciful God, I confess that I have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what I have done and by what I have left undone. I have not loved you with my whole heart. I have not loved my neighbor as myself. Therefore, I come before the throne of grace that I may receive mercy and find grace to help in every time of need. Forgive me, renew me, and lead me so that I may delight in your will and walk in your ways in the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was going to die for us, and for his sake, God forgives us all our sins. To those who believe in Jesus Christ, he gives the power to become the children of God, and bestows on them his Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. Lord God, mercifully receive the prayers of your people. Help us to see and understand the things we ought to do and give us grace and power to do that through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Okay. The first lesson is from Numbers chapter 23 verse 19. And Moses writes the following by the Holy Spirit. God is not man that he should lie or a son of man that he should change his mind. Has he said, and will he not do it? Or has he spoken, and will he not fulfill it? Here ends the reading of the lesson. The second lesson is from 1 John chapter 3, verses 1 through 3. And the Apostle John writes the following by the Holy Spirit. See what kind of love the Father has for us, that we should be called children of God. And this is what we are. The reason why the world does not know us is that it did not know Him. Beloved, we are God's children now, and what we will be has not yet appeared. But we know that when He appears, we shall be like him, because we shall see him as he is. And everyone who thus hopes in him purifies himself as he is pure. Here ends the reading of the second lesson. The third reading is from St. Paul's letter to the Romans, the 15th chapter starting at verse 8. And the Apostle Paul writes the following by the Holy Spirit. For I tell you that Christ became a servant to the circumcised to show God's truthfulness in order to confirm the promises given to the patriarchs and in order that the Gentiles might glorify God for His mercy. As it is written, Therefore I will praise you among the Gentiles and sing in your name. And again, it is said, Rejoice, O Gentiles, with his people. And again, praise the Lord, all you Gentiles, and let all the peoples extol him. And again, Isaiah says, The root of Jesse will come, even he who arises to rule the Gentiles. In him, will the Gentiles hope. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing, so that by the power of the Holy Spirit you may abound in hope. Here is the reading of the lesson. 
And then the Gospel from the Gospel of St. John, the first chapter, beginning in verse 9. And the Apostle John writes the following by the Holy Spirit. The true light, which enlightens everyone, was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world was made through him. Yet the world did not know him. He came to his own, and his own people did not receive him. But to all who did receive him, who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God, who were born not of blood, or of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. Here ends the reading of the Gospel. Let's pray. Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you that you have brought us together this day to be in the presence of your Son. Stir up your Holy Spirit within us so that receiving your word today, your word would be planted deeply in our hearts and bear fruit for eternal life. Lord, we pray that whatever is of sin or temptation of the flesh would fall on the ground and die and be of no effect so that we're completely available to all that you have for us now. And let the word of my mouth and meditation of our hearts be truly acceptable in your sight. Our strength and our redeemer. Amen. Praise to you, peace from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. In St. Paul's letter to the Romans, we read that the Holy Spirit explicitly says this. He says, May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing, so that by the power of the Holy Spirit you may abound in hope. Now, there are two things that we need to see if we're going to understand what this lesson is telling us. First of all, we need to see that God is a God of hope. Not a God of despair, not a God of depression, not a God of abandonment, but a God of hope. And the reason that's very important, especially nowadays, and there are a lot of people who are committing suicide, far more than we had in before the pandemic. There are a lot of people who are living in loneliness and darkness and depression and despair, and a lot of people walking around with a dark cloud just covering them. And the one thing that needs to be said over and over and over again is that if that is you, if you are experiencing that, the thing you need to know is that that is not God. God did not put that on you. That's the enemy, but that's not God. Because God is not a God of depression and despair. He is a God of hope. And that leads us to the second thing we need to see. Because He is a God of hope, He wants you to abound in hope. Abound in hope. God is not stingy. The word abound here means he wants you to overflow. It's like filling a glass and the water just overflows the glass. He wants you to overflow in hope. You know why? So you can pour out in other people. He wants you to be wealthy in hope. That's important for us to see. But if that's what he wants us to be, that's what he wants to give us, is this abounding hope that we can pour into other people, then it would be good for us to know what that hope is. And that hope, in the Greek here, means a sure and certain expectation of good. 
because God has promised that he has met every need for life and godliness because in the Bible there are at least 8,000 promises that he has made to his people. We are encouraged by God today to believe that all 8,000 promises are going to be fulfilled in our lives. And he encourages us to wait for it, to be patient, to endure, and to expect that no matter what we're going through, no matter what it is, good is coming. The good that he promised is on the way. That he's going to make all things work together good for those who love him who are called according to his purposes. But what's more, in this word that is translated hope, we find there's an emotional connection too. You see, we're not supposed to be a kind of people that when, when we have hope, when we meet the hope of the Lord, this is not the proper response. Okay, I'm going to show you what the improper response is. Are you ready? Okay, this is the improper response. Oh, yeah, wonderful. Well, praise the Lord. <laughs> no. I mean, I realize that, you know, somebody once said that we're the frozen chosen up here. But nevertheless, <laughs> that is not the proper response. The proper response is to get excited. To rejoice. To glory to God. It's, it's, like, it's like a couple. A married couple that finds out that they're going to have a baby. And I remember when Debbie came in one day and told me that we were going to have a child. Let me tell you that, you know, the the, the, uh, the news came to me and I wasn't like, oh yeah, well, yeah. I was excited. We were excited. And because we were excited about that, we had this expectation that this birth is coming, then we began to prepare for it. Get the room ready, buy clothes, get stuff you need for a baby. Pick names. We're so excited that we begin to prepare for what we know is coming. And that's how God wants us to be. He wants us to know that the good is coming. He wants us to expect that the birth is on the way. He wants us to believe that no matter what we're going through, no matter what sickness we're going through, no matter what road we're walking, that that good that he promised is going to come. It may come in five seconds, five minutes, five years. It is going to show up. And I just want to say that I bear witness to the truth of that. I have been in very dark, dark times as all of us have. But I can tell you that I have never been in a dark place where my God has not met me and brought me into hope. Brought the expectation of good into our lives. I have seen people with incurable diseases call on the name of the Lord and that good comes in and they're healed. Stage 4 cancer, healed. Tumors, healed. COPD, healed. Scleroderma, healed. I've even been in the presence of dead people who have been raised from the dead. And let me tell you something. When that happens in front of you, you don't sit there and go, oh yeah, I'll praise the Lord. <laughs> I mean, you draw me and drop, and you may have nothing to say. That was me. I was like... <laughs> but you're not just going to, oh yeah, well, I know. I've seen people who are unsaved and wicked meet the Lord Jesus Christ and get saved, and their lives are completely changed. And they have eternal life in heaven to look forward to. Our God means every word he says. It's only a matter of when it's going to be fulfilled, not a matter of if. 
And that's why he's telling us today, he is a God of hope, and your hope is not wishful thinking, with no basis in reality. Your hope, your expectation, is based on a God who does not lie and who fulfills his word, as we read in Numbers 23. But that leads us to something else. God is faithful. That's absolutely true. He calls us to expect the good to come. But then the question is, how do we prepare for that promise to be fulfilled in our life? Just as when you're expecting a baby and you're going to prepare, how do we prepare? Well, to prepare is another way of saying we're to have faith. See, if you believe and know that a baby is coming, even though you don't see that birth yet, you're going to prepare for it. That's faith. I know it's on the way. Therefore, I'm going to prepare for when it comes. When somebody gets prayed for, they believe. And they may not feel healed right away, but they're going to prepare to receive what God has. Someone comes to faith and is going to go to heaven. What do they do? They prepare to receive heaven when they change life. Faith is what leads us to receive that promise that, 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 that's expected. And probably one of the best definitions of faith that we could go with today is the belief that God cannot lie. It says in Numbers 23, God says, Am I a man that I should lie? No. Therefore, if we're not preparing to receive the good, you know what we're doing? We're living in unbelief, but we're also saying God's a liar. It won't happen. He can't do it. And so what God is saying to us today is that the hope is real. And we need to prepare for it by faith, because when we prepare for it by faith, then we are making the proper confession with our whole life. And that is that God does not lie. I believe it. And there are three ways that we can prepare in faith to receive that promise into our life. Whatever the promises are. Whether it's eternal life to go to heaven. Whether it's healing. Whether it's some other provision that God has for us. Whether it's receiving the gifts of the Spirit. Whatever it is. There are three ways that we prepare by faith to receive the promises that God has. Because some of the promises that we hope for are for this life. And some of the promises are for the next life. But we still have to prepare by faith either way. <clears throat> so how do we do that? The first thing we got to do is by faith we need to receive Jesus as our Lord and our Savior. It says in John chapter 1, that Jesus was rejected by the world and rejected by his own people. <coughs> but then it goes on to say, but to those who received him, who believed in his name, he gave the right to be called children of God. How do we become children of God? By receiving Jesus as our Lord and our Savior. And if we're his children, the children of the Father, then guess what? We're in his will. We're in the inheritance. We have what he's promised. You see, Jesus is the only way to salvation. He's the only way into the promises because he's the only sacrifice given and the only covenant given by the Father whereby these promises can be brought into our lives. Jesus is the key. You can't look anywhere else. In fact, he rules and reigns right now according to the covenant promises that were sanctified by the cross and by his resurrection. So the first thing we need to do is believe on him in the sense that we surrender our lives to Jesus so that he is our Lord and our Savior. He's in charge from now on, not us. 
And we live in obedience and faith to His Word. That's the first thing. That's the key. We have to receive Jesus because He's the one who brings us to heaven. Now, secondly, we find that we prepare by faith by walking in the same way that Jesus walked. That is to say that we are to live our lives by the same faith that Jesus walked by. Even though He's the Son of God, He left His glory behind. And He came and lived a fully human life by faith. And He said in John 14, 12, He said, Truly, truly, I say to you, He who believes in Me, the works I do, He will do. And greater works than these shall He do, because I go with the Father. What Jesus is saying there is that you kind of walk like I walk. Because you've got a job to do on earth. As the body of Christ, you're here to show the glory of the coming of the kingdom. And that means we need to walk the way he did. And how did he walk? Well, first of all, he believed that the Bible was sufficient for the ministry. Not human wisdom, the Bible. That was the word he used to destroy the devil and to set people free and to preach the word and to call people to repentance in his name. Secondly, he also walked in a way where it was all about God and not about himself. He came to do the will of the Father. We also need to humble ourselves so that we are here to do the will of the Father through the Son by the Holy Spirit. We need to walk away from pride and walk in the humility that Jesus has and had. He also was one who forgave, even on the cross. When the people around him were mocking him, he cried out, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. He blessed those who cursed him. He forgave those who abused him. He interceded for them before the Father. What we need to understand then is that we are to walk as Jesus walked. He prayed for the sick, cast out demons, proclaimed the good news, called people to repentance in His name for the forgiveness of sins and eternal life. That is our job. And we are to walk in that and that's a walk of faith. And as we're walking in that faith, then we will receive the blessings of the gifts of the Spirit to do the work that we have to do. We have to do it. We can't do it without faith. And then finally, we are called to prepare to receive the promises of God and receive what we hope for by doing what we find in 1 John chapter 3. It says we are to purify ourselves even as He is pure. And we have hope in Jesus that we are to purify ourselves even as He is pure. What does that mean? Well, the word purified here is in what's called the continuous present. So it could be translated, we are to continually purify ourselves as He is pure. What that refers to then is as Christians, every day is a day to repent. Every day is a day where the Holy Spirit will examine our lives and He will say, you know, this is what you need to change. This is the attitude that needs to die. This is the way the flesh you can walk in and I don't want you to walk in it anymore. And this is not condemnation. We're not to walk in condemnation. But it is a conviction that says, all right, here's where you've gone wrong. This is how you change. This is how I'll make it right. And we turn away from any attitude that's not of God and turn back to Jesus so we may walk with Him. That's what it means by purifying ourselves. A Christian will never have a need not to purify him or herself. Until we're in heaven, 
there's always more that we need to give to God so that we can walk more like Jesus. There are always attitudes that need to die. But because the Holy Spirit will lead us through it, we won't be continually changing those attitudes when we set free. And then it'll show us something else we need to repent of. It's called becoming cleansed so that people see more of Jesus in us and less of us. And one of the problems with the church, the body of Christ, throughout the ages has been they've been seeing too much of us and not enough of Jesus. They need to see more of Jesus. And that means we need to submit to the Holy Spirit purifying us and saying this needs to change. Here you need to change and repent. You need to turn away from this and give that to God. So today, let's remember that God has provided all things necessary for life and God will You can expect that He is going to bring good into your life no matter what situation you're in. And that good will come for now and for all eternity. He's got it all covered. We don't need to walk in fear. We don't need to walk in depression or despair. But if we're going to receive what He promised, then we need to walk in faith. And that means that we need to receive Jesus as our Lord and our Savior. It means that we need to walk as He walked. And it also means that every day is a day to turn away from sin and turn to God in the name of Jesus and be cleansed by His Holy Spirit. So let's commit ourselves to walking in faith so that we might prepare to receive the good that God has for us. Do you believe Him? Do you? I do. Then let's walk in faith so that our whole lives will declare to the world this one truth. God is not a liar. Let's pray. Father, I just thank you that you are the promise keeping God. I thank you, Lord, that we can expect good in every place and every way. Lord, we ask that you would, by your grace, work in us so that every day is a day that we reaffirm that you are Lord of our lives. Every day is a day when we recommit ourselves to walk in as you walk. And every day is a day when we repent and turn to you so that people can see more of you in our lives and less of us. Lord, let our lives be lives that walk with the integrity of the gospel of Jesus Christ and with the presence of our great God and Savior Jesus so that you may be revealed in us and that your truthfulness would be magnified in us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Good day. All right, well, let's do uh, number 60. Number 60 in the folder. Okay. He is, he is Lord. Number six. Thank you.
Heavenly Father, it is your will that all people should come to you through your Son. Stir up your Holy Spirit within your church and within this congregation, that we may in thought, word, and deed reveal the good news of Jesus Christ and bring men into saving faith. Lord, we pray for your church throughout the world, that you would grant us the grace to preach your word with power, while you lift up your hand to heal with miracles, wonders, and signs attending, that the name of Jesus would be magnified and revealed to all flesh, and that many would turn to him and live and be saved from the wrath that is to come. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our prayers. prayers. <clears throat> Lord Jesus, you've commanded us to pray for our nation. Lord, we pray your wisdom and understanding, counsel and life, knowledge and the fear of the Lord upon our elected leaders. Especially we pray this for our president, vice president, the Senate, the House, the Supreme Court, our governor, state legislature, state, local, and federal officials, and judges. Lord, where they're right, sustain them. And where they're wrong, grant them a spirit of grace and supplication to recognize their wrongs, to mourn over their sins as for an only son, to throw all their iniquitous decrees into the fire and be burned up forever, and to establish policies that are pleasing in your sight and for the furtherance of your kingdom. Lord, raise up righteous men and women who would speak truth in the midst of these chambers of power. And that repentance would come that leads to life. Lord, we pray that for our nation as well. We have sinned against you in many ways. But we ask, Lord, that in your judgment, remember mercy. And even now, bring an awakening to our country and revival to our churches. Cleanse us, Lord, from every root and branch of compromise and sin. Lord, forgive us. Forgive us well, we have forsaken you and embraced the world. Cleanse us by the power of your spirit and your blood. And bring us as a nation to repentance where we cry out to you, Lord Jesus, and are saved. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Lord Jesus, you've commanded us to pray for the people of Israel and for the peace and righteousness of Jerusalem. Let now be the time when they recognize you, the one that they pierce, mourn over you as for an only son, and are cleansed by your blood, filled with your spirit, and joined to your church as the one new man. Lord, we pray that, that the people of Israel would cry out, Blessed is he, Jesus of Nazareth, who comes in the name of the Lord, and be saved. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Lord Jesus, you are the healer, and by your stripes we are healed. We thank you for that. Lord, we pray a creative miracle for Eric Barron. Yes. And we pray the healing that you purchased on Calvary's Hill in the Islands Clyde, Mohini Yoda, Roger Rollis, Doug Sari, Darla Dama, Rose Winkler, Linda Winkler, Tim Hennessy, Keith Hansen, Cooper Parks, Brian Haugen, Jeremiah Slaw, Jimmy Matheson, Jim Drescher, Sarah Dufferin, Jack Demain, 
Helen Beck, Doris Michaelbus, Tim McKay, Arlo Nyland, and we pray your blessing on our military personnel, Rosie Lees, David Burr, Sandy Lees, Riley Legacy, Harvey Hanklin, and we pray your blessing on all those we mention now, whether out loud or in our hearts. Yes, Lord. Lord, I pray again that the persecuted church throughout the world, uh, brothers and sisters at Gilgit, Andrea Sandstreet, and our brothers and sisters in Nicaragua, and I, th I thank you in particular of this day, the man that kneeled down in the dust some years ago and repented of his sin. And I haven't seen him since, Lord, but uh, you know who he is, Lord, and I just pray, Father, that he re renews his faith in you and grows in his faith and love and will come to uh, salvation in his life every day, Lord. Yes, God. Praise Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Praise God. Lord, I just want to uh, give you great thanks for Dorothy. There. She is faithful, a uh, member of this church for so many years and all of her family. And I, I ask your blessing on all of her family yes. as they celebrate uh, her birthday. Yes, Lord. Praise God. Thank you. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our prayers. prayers. In your hands, O Lord, we come into all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy for your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Also with you. I think we have a lot of right here. We just have a white. White basket. Left. We'll just pass that around. All right. <coughs> Father, we offer with joy and thanksgiving when you have first given us ourselves, our time, and our possessions, signs of your gracious love. Receive them for the sake of him who offered himself for us, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body, and give it for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup. And after giving thanks, he gave it for all the drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this for the remembrance of me. And as we are his disciples on earth, let us pray as our Lord Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to go around and I'll give it to you. All right? Body of Christ can be free. 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 Blood Christ. Thank the Lord I receive Blood Christ to shepherd you. Blood Christ to shepherd you. Blood Christ to shepherd you. 
love Christ shed for you. Love Christ shed for you. Love Christ shed for you. Thank the Lord I've seen your love. Body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you and keep you in His grace. Let us pray. Pour out upon us the spirit of your love, O Lord, and unite the wills of those who have fed with one heavenly food. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make His face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and grant you His peace. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. For peace, serve the crucified and risen Lord. Thanks be to God. God. Hey, Pastor, I'd like to add one more prayer here. <coughs> prayer at this time. I just, want, I just want to pray that we gather together and pray uh, that this healing service that's going to be on uh, Tuesday night here. Yep. Lord Jesus, I just pray the people that need to be there will be there, Lord Jesus. Praise yep. God, those that the Holy Spirit's calling. Mm -hmm. And I pray there will just be a wonderful outpouring of your Spirit, them and all who are there. Praise God. Yeah. I know you're going to be there. Hallelujah. Thank, Thank you, Thank you, Jesus. Amen. 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 Thank you. Thank you. All right, let's do uh, Here is Love, 151. 151. <clears throat> <clears throat> <clears throat>
Praise Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen.